This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. Hey, the Raiders and 49ers both got in the win column yesterday. Oakland came back to beat the Steelers 24-21 at the Coliseum, while San Francisco went up 20 to nothing in the first half and held on for a 20 to 14 victory over the Broncos. Tight end George Kittle had 210 receiving yards in that one for the 49ers. Your Sacramento Kings are back at it again tonight in Chicago. To wrap up their four-game road trip, they'll play a Bulls team that lost by 56 to the Celtics over the weekend. Our coverage right here on Sports 1140 kicks off with game night at 3.30. Kings Live is at 4.30 and tip-off is set for 5 o'clock. And the Baseball Hall of Fame will have two new members. Former White Sox DH Harold Baines and former Cardinals closer Lee Smith were both announced as Hall of Famers yesterday. It's 7.01. Time to put your lights up. If you haven't, Squeaky Clean can hang. Visit squeakyclean.com. Those are your top stories. <laughs> Time for the second hour of the drive on Sports 1140. KHTK. I'm not letting you go to work today. Wait, what? Everybody, listen up. Welcome to the drive. Morning, morning, morning. You're going to talk. Get on the phone at 339-1140. <laughs> Pretty awesome, huh? Jump in on our text line at 44-1140. Everyone is talking about it. You must know that. The drive starts now. That's what I'm saying. Did you say that on the air? No. Okay. Well, it's still what I'm saying. <clears throat> All right. We're going to talk Kings in this segment. The uh, <laughs> We were talking during the break. The uh, the first highlight listed here is because uh, we're going to go over a little bit of the Cavs game and then the 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 Pacers. The first highlight here is a it's a uh, Iman Shumpert jumper. Make it 7-2 Kings. Can we just call that a Shumper? Yeah. Shumper. Iman Shumper Jumper. It's a Shumper. An Iman Shumper. Here it is. But a heel has the dribble, looks, finds Iman Shumper. Shumper tees up a straightaway 20 footer and hits nothing but net. Iman off the bounce at the top of the foul circle, gives the Kings a 7 to 2 lead, and Larry Drew walking out on the floor says, We got to do better than that. Great first quarter for the Kings. Uh, I, I believe it was an identical output. Th- what was it? 34, 36, something stupid like that. And the first quarter uh, that they put out against the Suns in the first quarter there. Uh, Cleveland had scored more points than the Suns did. But unlike the Suns game, Cleveland actually came back, and they actually took the lead uh, at one point in the second quarter. De'Aaron Fox, though, was uh, was brilliant that night. I think part of that was showing out a little Pretty bit for uh, our guy Colin Sexton. And... Uh, he went end to end here. Clarkson steps into a straightaway three, bounces high, no good. Battle for the rebound, chased down by Fox. Fox accelerates into the front court, weaves right, goes left to the window and scores. An end to end push by De'Aaron Fox, a 7 0 Sacramento run, and the Kings have a five point lead. Your Petkus Brothers moment of the game. Thank you, G Man. That was your Petkus Brothers moment of the game. Get the spectacular backyard you've always wanted with a beautiful Petkus Brothers patio or sunroom. The best price, best value, guaranteed every Every day. Kyle, knock, knock. Who's there? Peckis Brothers. All right. Then Peckis they, Brothers who? Peckis Brothers. For the spectacular backyard you've always wanted. <laughs> that's a that's <laughs> a good one. You like that? Yeah. It's a dad joke. It's funny because it's true. Mm-hmm. So is uh, the Kings getting a victory. Final seconds now. Final score tonight is going to be 129 to 110 as the final seconds tick off the clock. And the Kings have now won their third in a row. Only their fourth win in their last 13 years here in Cleveland, but they'll gladly take it tonight. It ended up being a game that had 10 lead changes and six ties. And Sacramento got great performances from so many players along the line. We mentioned the great night for De'Aaron Fox. 29 minutes, 30 points, 12 assists, 25 points for Buddy Heal. Amazing. I know, Kevin, you know, they've got a lot of injuries and people gone and people out but just so so amazing the difference year to year between lebron being there that that team that team was in the nba final six months ago yeah and they are now one of the worst teams in the league really does remind me of the year remember when when michael jordan retired and everybody left and the bulls were like one in eighty one. No, not really, but they were horrible. Didn't they win like nineteen games? Yeah, it was really something bad. Terrible. Well, the Kings that made them two and zero on the road trip. Move on to Indiana. No Victor Oladipo. Indiana had also played 
Orlando the previous night. Looking to go 3 0, Kyle. Yeah, it's time to call your local Geico agent, Vince Harris, at 916 923 5050. That's 916 923 5050. And Vince Harris, had he been in Indiana that night, and he wasn't because he's working hard saving right, you course. money. Would have seen the Kings uh, jump out to a decent start versus Indiana. It's grabbed inside by Bogey. Almost lost it. Now he hooks the pass for Costa Kufis. It's knocked out of his hands. He saves it, throws wildly. Bogey has it. Ten on the clock, three on the way. Bogdanovich hits it from right in front of Elston Turner in the Kings bench. And I saw Brian Gates. They kind of look back over his shoulder like, wow, did you see that? Kings now have their biggest lead of the ball game on that wild sequence. Bogdanovich makes it 36 to 24. The Kings on a 13 to 3 push. Well, 13 to 3 push there started out well for the Kings. And even before that, going backwards here, Buddy Hill with a huge shot from behind the arc. 15 on the possession, plenty of time. Belly digs into the low post. Dumps it out on the right wing to heel. He's going for a third triple. He's got his third three-pointer, and the Kings have their first lead of the ball game. They go up by two at 13 to 11. That's an early Petkus Brothers moment of the game. Buddy Buckets with three three-pointers for Sacramento and a two-point lead. It's an early but a great, great moment of the game. The Peckis Brothers moment of the game. Get the spectacular backyard you've always wanted with a beautiful Peckis Brothers patio or sunroom. Best price, best value, guaranteed every day. What What is that over there, Kyle? Oh, oh, I see you looking. It's Peckis Brothers. Mm. Hey, if we're going to call it a shumper, yeah. for, can we call Buddy Healed Baskets Healed Goals? You want to just break now? Like for the day? Yeah. Yeah. The, like, just we'll the just whole, play the outro. Just leave and come back tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. The real reason I'm silent, though, is not an offense to your dumb joke. It's, it's a like bad I'm, joke. I'm actually running through other players. <laughs> like, would it be a fox throw? No. Would it, would it be a but? See, don't. Don't. Just. No, I'm not. Play some highlights. All right, I'll play some highlights right now. Hey, here's a Willie Cauley-Stein turnover. Backcourt steal, Cauley-Stein. Kings down with a fresh full clock. No need to rush, and they throw it away. It's going to be a breakaway basket coming up. Corey Joseph going to be challenged by Buddy Heald. He scoops, it bounces twice, it settles in. 71-68. Kings are down by three. You see what you did there? You pissed off the G-man. Did you hear the disdain in his voice on that? I did. Like, he was, he was really not, upset. And he turnover. Yeah, here, here's throw it away. Uh, you weren't looking for it. Listen, you, listen to G Man. The inflection in his voice changes a lot. Here's G Man off of Marvin Bagley hook. Bagley isolated right side drives to his left. The jump hook right on target. He gathers very nicely and converts. Uh, okay, that was here's. It's one. grabbed here's inside bogey. by Bogey. Almost lost it. Now he hooks the pass for Costa Kufis. It's knocked out of his hands. He saves it. Throws wildly. Bogey has it. 10 on the clock, 3 on the way. Bogdanovich hits it from right in front of Elston Turner. In the He's excited. That's excited Gary Gerald. Happy, excited G legend. Now listen to the difference when Willie Cauley-Stein decides he doesn't care about Gary Gerald and wants to turn the ball over. Backcourt steal, Cauley-Stein. Kings now with a fresh full clock. No need to rush, and they throw it away. It's going to be a breakaway basket coming up. Corey Joseph going to be challenged by Buddy Heald. He scoops, it bounces twice, it settles in. 71-68. Kings are down by three. 9-0 run. Jaeger calling timeout. See? If you asked me what team Corey Joseph played for now, I think the Pacers would have been 30th on my list. Yeah, I would have said, like, uh, Moscow or somewhere in, in Europe or Turkey. Honestly, I thought he was still on Toronto. Nope. I maybe would have guessed the Celtics. Nope. In the end, the Kings Seems ran like out of Celtic. Ran out of gas. Didn't work. And uh well, the Pacers got a win. One point six is the determination. Giles with the inbounds to Mason, fakes the shot, and uh, Collison jumps over him and then comes over to congratulate him. Indiana gets revenge. Kings were a one point winner in Sacramento last Saturday night. Tonight they end up on the short end of the tally, 107 to 97. Got a request off the text line. It's a great point. Oh, go ahead, Kyle. When he pump fakes, is he fake Mason? 
got a request off the text line, the Jiffy Lube text line, and it's a good point. Uh, we, uh, with all the audio we played, we didn't play the Troy Williams. Nasty. Na- that putback was I, was, I still don't know how he did. It was like some Inspector Gadget, Plastic Man craziness. He bent around the backboard. Field, he's made three triples, trying to free up, shoot another one. He does. It's missed. Stick back. Coming baseline right. Oh, my goodness. Troy Williams came out of nowhere, and that brought everybody up off the Kings bench across the way. That was superb. That was superb. Wasn't enough, though. Kings lose. Doing some producing on the air, Kyle. I just got a text. Yeah, I see that happening. Uh, ask if we have any slots available tomorrow if we want to talk to our old friend Eric Armstead. Yeah. I think we do. Had a really good game. Yeah, absolutely. Love to talk to Eric Armstead of the 49ers. He got a win. It's an emotional moment. We'll Again, we'll play that audio a, a little bit later in the 735. Yeah, we'll talk to. I love to talk. Love to Eric. talking to Eric. Armstead. Talk to Eric Armstead tomorrow. So tomorrow will be kind of a Niner day because we got Matt Barrows on, and then uh, we'll play the Eric Armstead interview. And who knows? Maybe it'll end up on some national publications website. Maybe, maybe somebody will take some clips. Maybe. Okay, yeah, maybe. Kings in action tonight, five o'clock, right here on Cage to If you have a split screen on your TV back at home, or maybe you pull out the old black and white. You can watch the uh, Kings and the Monday Night Football, right right next to each other. Seahawks and Vikings, big NFC playoff implications. We kind of got to go here, but speaking of two TVs, I in my I'm moving into a new place, mm, and Kyle, I have an office. Kyle, I have an office. Am I required to get a second TV in there? In the office? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because for many reasons. Because I don't... Okay. Number one, TVs are so like relatively so cheap right now. You can get a 32-inch TV for seriously 100 bucks, which is all you need. You can get a stand for that's what I That's what I have. I have a, bucks. Yeah, I have the mount. I have a 32-inch mounted up there, there right now. There you go. So, so you put one in your so office. So does Frank Gore. <laughs> 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 so I wasn't going to go, and there you went. Uh, but also for you... You could do that in your office. You could also cut video highlights and stuff and put them out on your Twitter machine. Mm. There's all kinds of fun you could have with that. That's a great point. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Just when you get married and have kids, your office, which is all set up like that, like, I don't know, mine, where I have a TV, I got a nice Mac, I got a microphone, I built a studio in there, becomes a second laundry room and storage Mm. space around Christmas. Perfect. Yeah, we'll take a break. When we get back, let's do some four-down territory. What was your game of the weekend? We need to uh, power rank the NFC after last night. And uh, what did yesterday's loss mean for the New England Patriots long-term? We'll talk about that. Poor Boston, man. Boston sports. Really rough for them. Really tough day for them, and we uh, stand with Boston sports fan. It's The Drive, Sports 1140 KHDK. Four Down Territory, brought to you by Firewings. 21 different flavors to choose from. Hey, Firewings.com, just wing it. I think I'm going to go today and get the Nashville Fire Chicken Sandwich. You should. I'm going to. That's happening. You really, really should. That's a thing that's going down today. Hmm. It went down Friday, and it was amazing. A little big turnout. Big turnout the house. Saturday? Saturday, sorry. I've been doing that all day. Saturday yeah, you, was you it. You mixed up a Friday yeah, and a Saturday I said that I, I went to the Ice Cube concert Friday. Metallica was Friday, and then Ice Cube Saturday. Yeah, first down. What was your game of the weekend? That's a good question, Kyle. Thanks, man. My game of the weekend was Miami and New England. I, I had that on a TV the whole time, and it was a blast. It was back and forth. It was... It, it, it was it, knowing we screwed a lot of things up on Friday. Uh, our fourth down question Friday was, who's going to lose by more, the Raiders or the Niners? Well, they, they shockingly both won. But one thing we did talk about, though, was that Miami curse, that Tom Brady and the Patriots go into Miami and just suck there. It is by far so weird. the, the worst performance for Tom Brady's Patriots uh, anywhere. And, and we mentioned the only place Tom Brady has more losses than Miami is New England. And it's it's actually pretty close. 
So that game was back and forth, and then obviously you had the Miami Miracle at the end. Those are always fun to watch, uh, and, and that's a play you'll see replayed for years and years and years. There, there were some, there were definitely some other options, but I feel like I'd be forcing it if I picked a different game. I think I'm going to go Cowboys Eagles. I, I with respect to Chiefs Ravens, mm-hmm. but Cowboys Eagles because of this, there were 15 points scored in that game. Uh, sorry, 18 total points scored with 12-11 to go in the fourth quarter. The Cowboys responded with a touchdown yep. to make it 16-9 with 7.46 left. Philly tied it at 16 with 3.12 left. Dallas went up 11 seconds later, 23-16. to Then the Eagles came back to tie it with a minute 39 left at 23 all. And then the Cowboys won on a ridiculous Amari Cooper touchdown in overtime where if it had been a better throw from Dak Prescott, it's probably intercepted probably tipped off. and taken to the house the other way. Instead, it gets tipped up in the air. Cooper catches it and goes in for a touchdown. That's just a wild ending. How about 42 of 54 for yeah. Dak Prescott? Yeah. 455 for yards. Uh, Amari Cooper's looked decent. He looked okay, for sure. Been on the cow- uh, he looked okay. Yeah, uh, shout out to that game too. For once again, it seems like we do this every week. Some of the worst refereeing I've ever seen. Yeah, they they they're just the pitiful. officiating's getting pretty brutal. Pitiful. Second down. Second down. Second down. All right, rank these NFC teams: Rams, Saints, Bears. Uh, here's why this is tough. I don't want to do the recency bias though. Sure. Uh, Saints and Rams are both eleven and two. Bears are eight and four. Nine and four. And I don't know if the Rams, much like the Saints a couple weeks ago in Dallas, I don't know if the Rams just had that 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 week, that off week. But but here's the thing. This is it's the second week in a row the Rams have looked mortal. Mm-hmm. They uh they beat the Lions last week 30 to 16, but that game was a lot closer than it looked. Uh I'm really tempted to say, well, the Bears just went in and punched the Rams in the mouth. I got to put them number one. I can't. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Rams. I'm going to go Rams, Bears, Saints. That's that's the one thing I'll give the Bears because I've noticed the Saints look terrible versus Dallas. And they didn't look that great yesterday in Tampa Bay. And that was a revenge game. No, they're fine. They're fine. But I think it's time we look at that Bears defense and what Vic Fangio is doing. Mm-hmm. And 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 it's very interesting now to see how that's going to work in the NFC. If you told me the Bears are going to win the Super Bowl this year, I'd be surprised. But I wouldn't be shocked at this point if mm-hmm. that defense stays hot. They're a contender for sure. They're they're, they're a bona fide contender for sure. Absolutely contender. But I, I I can't put them number one at this point. I've still got Saints one. Because I think their their defense, they have the best combination of offense and defense of those three. Uh, I'm gonna go. They beat the Rams, right? And they beat beat the Rams in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I think I'm still going to go Rams two. Okay. And then Bears three, but mostly because like that defense is incredible. It's the best defense in the league. But I just don't trust them to score enough points because they're going to have to go on the road to New Orleans or or L.A. Sure. And I don't trust them to be able to to score with those teams. I know people are going to say, well, with that defense, they only need to score 20 points. And I, I don't know if they can do that. Like, Matt Nagy's done a great job, but Mitchell Trubisky looked bad last night. And he's looked bad more times than he's looked great this year. I'm going to switch, and I'm going to actually put the Bears eighth in the NFC because I just remembered that uh, our dumb listener, John, is a Bears fan. Oh, Kings Twitter MVP? Yeah, so uh, Bears ninth best in the conference. Third down. <laughs> Third down. I just want to note, I said Kings Twitter MVP, and you said yeah. No, I didn't. Uh, did the Pats lose the Super Bowl yesterday? Okay, yeah, no, I, I wrote that right. Uh and we got to be quick here, but here's the deal. The Pats are now two games behind the Chiefs. They hold the tiebreaker with the Chiefs, but they are two games back. It would take a monumental collapse from Kansas mm-hmm. City to lose out on that one spot. Here's the deal. The Pats have not lost in the playoffs in New England since the 2012 AFC Championship game versus the Ravens. They're 8-0 at home in the postseason, 
ever since that loss. All right, uh, that loss for Brady's entire career. The Pats are nineteen and three in Foxborough. However, when in when playing in January on the road, which doesn't happen that often, think about this: nineteen and three under Tom Brady when playing in Foxborough in the playoffs, three and four Oof. while playing away games in the playoffs. Two things there: number one, that's a bad record. Number two, that's only seven games in the Brady era. Uh, I it, it, the Patriots aren't blowing people away anyways this year. Number one, number two that pretty much guaranteed they're not going to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Yeah. So that's why I ask about the Super Bowl. I, I think I think the Pats have to be the one seed in order to get there. I don't think that happens. I don't think they get through the AFC on the road. So, yeah, I think we might look back at the end of the year to yesterday's game and say that that's where the Pats lost their opportunity. Yeah, they've had a couple of weird losses. That game yesterday, they, they had that weird loss to the Jaguars. Yep. Yep. Earlier in the year, yep. which looks especially strange now. Well, that was the second game of the year, and the Jags kicked the hell out of them. And then they went yeah. and then went they went and uh, lost in Detroit to the Lions, yeah. twenty six to ten. Yeah, very, very just strange start to the year for them, and I don't think they've ever quite been right. Lost but, to the Titans, thirty four to ten. But, but I could also see this as one of those things. So I agree with everything you said, but I could also see us as looking back on this and going, ha ha, this is why the regular season doesn't matter. You're absolutely right. And, and so on, until, on, right. until they go in and lose, Seems I know like the numbers the are stacked against them, right? But until they go in and lose, I'm, I'm done betting against that team. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. Got to go quick. Seahawks, Vikings, who you got? All right, Seahawks hosting this one, and that's why I'm going to give them the victory. Three and a half point spread. Seattle is favored. Three of those points because they're at home. Twelfth man up there, especially on Monday Night Football. It is a real, real advantage, whether you hate Seattle or not. And, of course, we hate Seattle fans, at least football fans. It's That's the real deal. So uh, I'm going to say this one. High scoring. I'll say uh, 37-28 Vikings. Or uh, excuse me, thirty-seven twenty-eight yeah. Seahawks in this one. Yeah, I think I think the Seahawks are are really rolling right now. They do this every year where they stumble early and then kind of get it together to make a push. They're scary. They're playing really, really well right now. Their offensive line is terrific, and Russell Wilson is playing as well as anybody in the league. I think the Seahawks win this game twenty-seven seventeen. George Kittle had a huge day yesterday. We will talk about that. Also, the Raiders slipped their way into a victory over the Steelers. See what I did there. And uh, the Redskins, with their quarterback that knows the system, had tough luck versus the New York football Giants. And Kyle's Houston Texans finally lose. We'll break all that down next right here on Sports 1140 KHTK. This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. The Raiders and 49ers both got in the win column yesterday. Oakland came roaring back late to beat the Steelers 24-21 at the Coliseum. San Francisco went up 20 to nothing in the first half and held on for a 20 to 14 win over the Broncos. Tight end George Kittle had 210 receiving yards for the 49ers in that one. Your Sacramento Kings are back at it again tonight in Chicago against a Bulls team that fell to the Celtics by 56 points over the weekend. Our coverage on Sports 1140 begins with game night at 3.30. Kings Live is at 4.30. Tip-off with the G-Man is set for 5 o'clock. And the Baseball Hall of Fame has a couple of new members. Former White Sox DH Harold Baines and former Cardinals closer Lee Smith were both announced as Hall of Famers on Sunday. It is 7.34. Time for Squeaky Clean to clean your gutters. Visit squeakyclean.com. Those are your top stories. Now back to The Drive on Sports 1140 KHTK. It's The Drive on Sports 1140 KHTK. All right, talking football in this segment. We'll uh, do a full 20 minutes on the Kings coming up at 8.05. You got to love... Now, let me, let, me, let me get serious here. <sighs> Thoughts with the Boston uh, sports community today. That's kind of what we've been talking about. Just a horrible loss for the Patriots yesterday. And, uh, man, is that city ever going to get a break in the sports world? That's my question. That's the drive question of the day. Is Boston ever going to get a break in the sports world? I, I looked at so many Patriot fans, some in tears yesterday, Kyle, and I felt for them. Yeah, I, I, I wonder how you recover from a loss like that, especially when you go back. Let's go back just to October. Yeah, 
and the World Series in that 18 inning game that they lost in a heartbreaking fashion on the walk off Max Muncie homer. That was it was one of those. I don't know if they'll ever recover. When you look at it, doesn't matter what team you root for. Mm -hmm. If you can just be objective and look at that, yeah, it 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 gets you. And and then you look the Celtics not only struggling this year, Mm -hmm. but they lost Game Seven of the Conference Finals last year. Hayward thing that was huge, obviously brutal. Um, Patriots haven't won a Super Bowl in what two years? Yeah, yeah, going on two years. Yeah, that was uh, and and that they had to come back against the Falcons. Mm-hmm. Dan Shaughnessy writes for the Boston Globe. The headline here, which really says it all, is the Patriots. I'm not even gonna try a Boston accent. I really want to though. Is Patriots stunner? The worst non-playoff loss in Boston sports history. Okay, let's just call it the worst non-playoff loss in Boston sports history. Hyperbole? Maybe not. I dare you to come up with anything more hideous and ghoulish, ghoulish, than what happened to the Pats at Hard Rock Stadium Sunday afternoon. And the consequences are likely to be enormous. I like how so uh, hi, I like how Bill Simmons avoids the like hyperbole thing mm-hmm. by going like oh, that's one of the like six worst losses in Patriots history. Yeah, ever in hi- in history. He just throws the random number on it. Like the Dan Shaughnessy just goes for it though. And it says a lot that he has to go like hyper specific. Is this the worst Patriots loss? In the regular season, in the Bill Belichick era, <laughs> right over the last year, <laughs> or you see the you see it on Twitter. Worst period loss period ever. Period. Like, dude, plays like that happen sometimes. Like weird stuff happens. Let's listen to uh, the beleaguered and perhaps on the hot seat. Bill Belichick after the game. It came down to one play, but there are a lot of things besides that. So, you know, in the end, we just got to just got to do a better job than we did. And uh, you know, Miami played hard like they always do, and um, they, they just made one more play than we did. You can hear it in his voice, man. He knows he's out. I wonder if he even knows what league he's playing in. Yeah, a lot of points scored in the first half, and not so many in the second half. But that's the National Football League. Okay, all right. He knows what league he's playing in. Uh, Tom Brady, uh, 41 years old, by the way. Does he sound more, I don't want to say excited, there seems to be more life in his voice after a loss than there does after a win. Like, I think he really just hates Tom Brady and wants to lose all the games, so he retires. He secretly likes it. Well, speaking of Tom Brady, he's 41 years old, by the way. Another thing going wrong for Patriots Mm -hmm. fans, Tom Brady is aging. He's not getting any younger, Kyle. And uh, he, I just wonder if, you know, Tom, should it even come to this? They, you know, they made a good play. I think we all had plays on offense for kind of those desperation plays. And I thought, you know, they did a good job executing it. So they got it to their fast guys. And, you know, it's football's a crazy game. It shouldn't have come down to that. We asked, I, I think we left a lot more points on the board offensively. And, you know, that's, that's football. Tom, we talked about this Friday. It sure is tough for you to play in Miami, isn't it? But they got a good defense. They play well at home. I know we said it's tough to win here. Everyone seems like, you know, we should. You know, we figure out a way to, you know, finish it the right way. And, uh, you know, give them credit. They made a great play at the end. They made a great play. They made some other great plays, so. Mm. Wow. Unbelievable. What uh, what play was that? Daniel, last shot, back to throw. They throw it down. They try to pitch it, and they do. To Parker, Parker pitches it, and it's Greg, Greg, 30, 20, that counts, he's got a tackle, oh, no that way, way. he no got way. the answer, no way. what the, no. no. the Dolphins win, <laughs> unbelievable, <laughs> are you kidding oh. me, oh. Oh. that is unbelievable, I don't oh. believe oh. what I just saw, that was so bad on many levels, but at least they were excited, ah, ah, Ah. Way to uh, way to work the uh, equipment, by the way, guys. Sheesh. 
Patriots weren't as uh, weren't as happy. At the 15 yard line, Tannehill throws down the middle, caught by Stills. Laterals back to Butler, or rather Parker, who flips it to Drake. He runs across the 40 of New England, angling inside oh, to the 30, 25. <laughs> 20, 15, 10, he's going to win the full race to the end zone. The Dolphins are going to win it on the lateral. Didn't talk for 34 seconds. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, jeez. By the way, how about uh, how about Gronk being out there playing uh, safety? <laughs> From the 5-3-0 Boston, most snake-bitten sports city in America. That's a question. Man, Patriots lost. Miami won. That was a, a fun finish for all. Let's move on to the local teams here. The uh, the 49ers hosted the Denver Broncos, who aren't exactly world beaters, but definitely were favored in this game. But apparently that's because the uh, betting public and the bookmakers didn't know about Nick Mullins and George Kittle. Out of a pistol, showing a little fly sweep motion. Mullins pulls the ball back, throws to a wide open Kittle near side. Kittle 40. Kittle needs a block 50. Kittle got the block Goodbye. 30. He is gone. Stone cold Kittle, 85 yards. Welcome to the thousand yard club. Touchdown, 49ers. You know, Michigan tight end Jake Butt, true last name, uh, was drafted one spot ahead of George Kittle by the 49ers. And George Kittle has now, and, and you got to consider this too. On one hand, the argument is look at the quarterbacks he's had this year. And uh, he's still a top tight end in the league. On the other end, sometimes I see when you have bad quarterbacks, the tight ends tend to shine. So I really don't know which way to take that. It'll be interesting to see Kittle and Garoppolo hopefully play a full season next year. Uh, Either way, uh, it was... George Kittle, Kyle, had, what, 200 and something yards in the second quarter? No, I mean, not in the second quarter, but cumulative. I know you're a Niners wire guy, so I figured you'd have it nailed. Yeah, he had 210 in the first half. And that that's that's what he finished with. Yeah, he's four yards off the single-game record for a tight end. That couldn't get him the ball once in the second half. Like, not even a little screen. Something. The issue became the Broncos were so heavily focusing on him keying on him and Nick Mullins doesn't have the talent to take advantage of of the holes left open by a defense when they do that and the game was too close that the Niners could just start trying to force throws to Kittle right like they needed to gain yards and and score because their defense isn't very good and we saw it they only ended up winning by six yeah because they went away from George Kittle the Broncos were five of seven on fourth downs. That's that's, that's not a good defensive stat. For the, <laughs> the re, uh, Pro Football Reference has records dating back to ninety one on fourth down conversions. Five ties the record for number of conversions on fourth down in a game since ninety one, and seven ties the record for attempts. I've got a stat for you then, please. George Kittle had two hundred and ten yards receiving in the first half. It's the most and a half since Steve Largent in 87, I believe. And the 49ers outscored the Broncos 20 to nothing in the first half. Uh George Kittle had zero yards receiving in Uh the second half. The Broncos outscored the 49ers 14 to nothing. Coincidence? I think not. I don't think so. Just throw every ball to George Kittle. I don't care if he's covered. George Kittle will find a way. To catch the ball. the A big thing for me for the 49ers yesterday was Dante Pettis had a huge drop in the third quarter on a on a third and seven that would have that would have gone for a ton of yards, but he turned his head upfield too early, dropped the ball. Niners had to punt. Later on in the game, on a third and three, a ball goes off Trent Taylor's hands into the air, gets intercepted. Yep. Huge play in the game. Both of those guys converted third downs on the Niners last drive to ice it or what should have iced it uh George some, Kittle's 400th yard <laughs> something that has gone overlooked because they won was the clock management at the end yeah the that's inexcusable been an issue. um 
snapping it too early and kneeling down. Yeah, how do you botch? Give, how do you botch victory formation? Like that. That shit. That is something that you have to work on. That you just have down. And I know the Niners needed to work on things other than a victory formation, but that's just yeah. easy. That's <laughs> that's easy math. You know, you have a forty-second right. play clock. Right. When you have two minutes left in a first down, you know you have to snap it four times, and that fourth time the clock needs to run all the way off. And it's inexcusable to snap it early and then kneel down with time left. That could have just been a disaster. Well, they snuck out with the victory, and I like your point. They haven't had much uh, experience in victory formation this year. After the game, there was a special moment in the locker room. Uh Tony York, the 35-year-old younger brother of Jed York, the uh, owner of the 49ers, passed away on Friday. Uh, That was a surprise announcement over the weekend. The family did not release details, nor did they need to, on the cause of death, but obviously something that that shook the organization up. They go out and they get a win, and uh, they had cameras uh, in the locker room after. I'll let you take a listen. We made it a little bit harder than we needed to, but I feel good now, guys. Mm-hmm. It was everyone across the board. D, you played your ass off. O, played your ass off. Special teams played your ass off. I want to get one, one, go, one game ball out first, all right, in particular. All right, George Kittle, what'd you have, 210? Hey, 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 five, hey, five yards, five yards off the all-time record. <laughs> hey, my fault, I can get the ball. Awesome job. Hey, guys, next, since I've been here, all right, I've, the biggest Niner fan I've been around is Tony York. All right, you obviously he's an owner and everything, but I'm telling you guys, he loves the Niners more than anyone I've been around. All right, I don't want to say it, but there is no doubt about it who we were playing for today. Jed, the fact you could come today here, be here with us. This hasn't been the easiest year for any of us. It's probably the understatement of the year. Um, you know, my brother was a great kid. He loved everything about this. He loved everything about you guys. You know, it was hard for him sometimes, and I think he's at peace now. Um, but I want you guys to know this. I talked to Kyle and John a little bit last night. Bill Walsh said something. I don't know if you shared it with them. But champions behave like champions before they're champions. This team is going to be a champion. I'm going to leave a ring when we get one for my brother. And I want everybody to look around this room. Know how good that we can be. Believe in this brotherhood. Believe in this guy, believe in this guy, believe in yourselves. And it's going to be about mental toughness. It's going to be about what can we get through more than the other 31 teams out there. And we are going to do it. You guys keep fighting your asses off. I'm going to give my brother a ring. I appreciate this very, very much. That's a... uh... That's a pretty raw, raw moment from the 49er locker room. Puts a little context uh, into that victory yesterday. Could not have been easy uh, for Jed York or, or any of them. And, and normally I, 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 I can't stand when owners address the team other than after a Super Bowl. It makes no sense to me. It never made any sense to me. In this case, that was uh, very appropriate and, and well said by Jed, who's taken a, a ton of crap over the years. A weird thing, Kyle, I, I – I looked at the uh, team announcement, uh, mm-hmm. the official announcement. This is where we're at, that this actually made me feel good. I looked at the team announcement of Tony York's passing, mm-hmm. and I clicked on the tweet, and I looked at the comments. Just hate looked at the comments because the Niners aren't doing that well, mm-hmm. and the York family has long had a, uh, a, a not the most sterling reputation for knowing what they're doing. I looked at the comments just to see which jag bags were going to mm-hmm. hide. Sure. It's probably 112, 100, over 100 comments. Not one. Not one was snarky. Wow. Not a single one. They were all RIP Tony, thoughts with you guys. They were all 
And not, that was actually not the case on Facebook. If you oh, really? Yeah. It's just well, I'll I'll shout out, and maybe that's changed since yesterday, but you know sometimes things like that bring uh, bring everyone together across uh, party lines, and that was uh, that was definitely well said by Jed York. I'm with you on owners addressing teams. It's uh, usually very contrived, cringeworthy, uh, and that's what when I first saw the Niners tweet go out. Yeah. That Jed spoke as like oh no right like i right i hope this isn't some weird thing where he tries to but you could tell it was very very real yep and i think the players appreciated it yeah i think so and we'll it, ask it eric a, armstead tomorrow yeah when, when he yeah, comes for sure. we'll talk to him about that as well yeah and that's going to be good to get his perspective because at least on the video that didn't look like something i'm sure jed had thought about a little bit what sure. he was going to say but that wasn't some raw raw I'm going to use this as a jumping off point to gain support from players, right. which is super what I was expecting. And it was not. No. It, was, it was very... Very I raw. Don't wanna, I don't want to... Yeah, I, didn't, I don't want to say cool. No. Because uh, it's not I mean, what it I is. I mean, for but, him to do that and, and keep himself together, I mean, he almost lost it a couple of times. Admirable. Ago, who, it was very admirable. Have? All right. Well, our... our Thoughts. I think whether you're a Niner, Raider, or whatever fan, I mean, that that's that's a tough situation. So uh, that, that was a good win for them on the field and a good win uh, to, to at least uh, maybe put a couple smiles on people's faces off the field. Uh, let's move on. I want to get to the Raiders here. Uh, did you see the uh, retweet of Booger McFarland's tweet breaking down the, uh, the Bears-Rams matchup? Yeah. <laughs> Quote, he was asked, and this happens to everybody, but. Happens to me literally every week. He was asked before on uh, Twitter uh, uh, what he thought of the matchup. Quote, I think the Bears get exposed. Nagy's done a great job of scheming up offense, and Mitch has played well within the system, but I think the Rams are the best team in football. I'd be shocked if they don't win in Chicago. You can't really rip the guy for that. He was asked his opinion. That's that's what his opinion was. Well, and... By the way, my opinion, too, going into the game. Let's be real honest. I, I would have picked the Rams to beat the Bears. Not by a lot, but I would have picked them. Yeah, I think I had the Rams minus three and a half. I thought it was going to be within a touchdown. Sure. But he wasn't wrong about the Bears' offense getting exposed. He didn't account for the fact the Bears' defense I was going to fly around Woof. the way that he did. They were very good, and Jared Goff was very bad. I especially like the take that Sean McVay spent too much time memorizing the Bears' defensive players and didn't spend enough time on, on, huh. on game film. Oh, I thought you were going to click something. Oh, I thought no, you were no. ignoring my, no, my no. hand going we, up. We got our signals. The, up. Go the, the Bears did show, and I want to get to the – I know you want to get to the Raiders. Yeah, that's but the Bears, The Bears showed that if you just don't and – the, and the Lions showed this a little bit too, but if you just don't bite on the Rams play action, you're golden because a lot of their offense is predicated on – your defense moving around to stop right. a run that doesn't happen. Would I be being presumptuous, oh football expert, if I added if I added to your statement by saying, if you don't bite on the Rams play action and you have the personnel that, to yes. to to yes. execute that uh, totally? Because I think one thing about they're just so fast and so dominant on that line. Yeah. No, Jared that, that, Goff that, had no chance for much of that game. Yeah, it's not like you and me and and nine listeners could go out and, and do saying. that. But the the Bears have a combination of the personnel, and they right. played disciplined last night, and that was a hallmark of those 49ers defenses under Vic Fangio. Rams versus Bears, ten consecutive weeks, ten games, neutral site. How many? How many does who and who win in your opinion? I think Rams win that series six four. Really? Okay. Maybe seven three. Wow. Okay. I want to get to the Raiders here, and I'm going to, I'm screwing Raider fans. You know what? I'm not going to get to the Raiders. We're going to do Kings in the next segment, but I don't want to screw Raider fans after a big win like that and put them in yeah, for a minute. 30 seconds yeah, there. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll lead the next segment with Raiders and then slide into yeah, the yeah. Sacramento Kings. Uh, we'll pause and take a break here. Hey, listen, when we come back, uh, we will get into the Kings. We'll preview tonight. Uh, we'll talk about the Raiders' win over the Steelers. And I am curious. I, I would like to know from Raider fans. We were making fun of it earlier, but – I would like to know the Boca Raider fans whether or not uh, they enjoyed the win yesterday or is your, is your mind on the draft? I put out a poll yesterday. I haven't even checked the results asking that same question. I'll give you the results uh, when I get back. But before we go to break, here is uh, Kyle Madsen at the Kyle Madsen Sports Desk. It's time to call your local Geico agent, our favorite Geico agent, I, th I think I'm allowed to say, Vince uh, yeah. Harris. 
at 916-923-5050. That's 916-923-5050. Vince Harris. Vince Harris is, don't call him Vinny. Don't call him Vincent. It's Vince Harris. I hope Vince goes around and speaks about himself in the third person. Like Vince, Vince, Vince Harris is happy to see you. Vince Harris is a good, like, first last name. Like where you just call I mean, it was like like bo- like, like, like John I grew up, Fitzharris. I grew up no, I grew up with a with a buddy of mine's name David Gray, and he's just David Gray. Mm-hmm. That's his, oh, it's I see first, what you're saying. First and last name rolls off Vince the Harris. Vince Harris. Yeah. I thought you were saying like that'd be a great combo. Like Jonathan Fitzharris. No, <laughs> it sounds like Jonathan Fitzharris, LSU. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nah, just Vince Harris. Go yeah. see him. Go see him today. Go see him right now. They may not be open. Get in line. Get in line. Camp out. Go see Vince. We'll take a break. When we come back, (laughs) he's getting his money's worth. Raiders, then Kings, right here on Sports 1140 KHDK.